Hi, welcome back to part four of Skeletal. So I'm going to start out with a clicker question. We use these when we're in person, but there's no reason why you can't do them too. So think about this. Jamil broke her arm. She has it in a cast with signatures all over it. And the cells that are most, act, most likely actively dividing in her arm are the You know, here's the bone that's getting repaired. And the correct answer is osteoprogenitor cells. So she's creating more cells to manufacture osteoblasts that will then become osteocytes. Okay, let's try another. A lacuna, or lacuni in plural, is a And I will reveal the answer. The answer is space or cave where the osteocytes reside. Remember that um, the matrix is very hardened. And if you're a living thing, essentially you're living in an environment that's rigid. So you need to have a little cave where you can live inside this rigid environment. So that little cave is called a lacuna or lacuni when you have more than one. Okay, good. Now, um, Macroscopically still, we're going to look at, let's look at the end of a long bone. So let me get my pen out. And in this femur here, in this end of the long bone, are, do you notice the spongy bone here has all these little lines like this? They go in these different directions. And here we see them kind of up like this and like this. So it's a weaving of these thin plates of bone. And if you were to enlarge that, you'd see that you have these pieces of bone that are all sort of woven, making up that spongy bone. And if you were to look inside one of these, you know, and slice it and look inside it, you would see um, what, what you have been looking at in your slides. And uh, you'd be able to see this structure like this where this blackened area are the lacuni and inside the lacuni are those cells. Okay, so that's more microscopically is what you'd see here. But let's go back to these lines that you see. And these are, when we look at them um, more carefully in more detail, which is this next slide that I'm showing you, you notice these disorientation of those trabeculae. They're called trabeculae. And there are these sort of chards of bone that are oriented in these different directions. So think about it first, why they would be that way. You know, why you would be drawing them like this, and then some of them like this. In this opposite direction, some of them are, are coming up, and then others are coming around. And what is it about the formation, uh, the orientation of those trabeculae? And it turns out that it creates a very strong bone. So think of the weight of your body. Your weight of the body is pressing down on this femur. And this hip is taking a lot of, a lot of weight. So if we have a body that's sitting on there, we're going to, I mean, you know that this is an area of fracture, right? This is a place when you say that somebody broke their hip. It's exactly along here that this head of the femur is broken. So this is a, a, an area that needs to be strengthened. It receives a lot of weight. All your upper body is on that. And so uh, the other thing that it's going to do is it's also taking a lot of torque because think of this hip that's, in, you know, this is inserted into the hip and um, this bone is coming down here. So there's the, this sort of pressure on here as this, tri this, you know, in the socket is moving around. So by creating this, these, um, this orientation of these trabeculae, it's going to try and strengthen it given both the weight of the upper body and the movement of that actual bone. Okay, so it's going to create strength. It's going to make it a lot stronger. Even then, when, once osteopenia and osteoporosis start to come in, this, this is definitely an area of weakness. Okay, if we look microscopically now, 
um, you've been looking at these and this week in lab you're looking at this bone uh, you it's very different it's very different you see all these little darkened areas which are lacuna plural lacuni and inside that lacuna then would be the living cell and the rest would be all matrix in the very middle I'm going to change color here of my pen um, in the very middle here in green I'm going to make where the blood is coming in to irrigate all these cells should have made that one red but I'd already started with red and so to irrigate it then it's going to have to send out little canals canaliculi to be able to irrigate these different cells right so you're going to see a structure which are these lines uh, and those are indicating those little canals or canaliculi that are taking that blood from the central canal that's that's the one place where that artery is and transporting it to all the cells the question is how far can it go you know it can come to this one but you know will it go to one here beyond my drawing so what happens is that no it can't go forever right it needs a certain area in which it functions in so um we'll do it in blue the entire area let's make it like this that that one particular artery here in the central canal that area that it can where it can supply blood to all these cells is called an osteon so an osteon then is that region that has a central canal and all the cells that can be irrigated by that particular artery that's an osteon and it's something like once you see this once you'll never confuse it right if I put this slide on your lab practical you're never going to tell me it's muscle or something it's it's so classic in what it looks like okay uh, if you look at it in a drawing an osteon then uh, with its artery and also a vein that's irrigating all these cells in the vicinity this is a really nice drawing but another very interesting thing is that surrounding it are collagen fibers that are going to make it very strong and collagen fibers look at the orientation of them some are coming this way in the first layer the second layer they're going that way and the third layer they're going again in a different direction and so once you squish these all in together you can see that it's created a whole lot more strength in that um, in that arrangement of that particular osteon and again in this vision here's a a cell a cell a cell each one inside its lacuna we're going to stop that there and then we'll continue on with the formation of of bone in a fetus so let's make this one our stop slide. Thanks for listening.